All right, so today we're doing a mountain pass and we're down to about 30 miles an hour now with gas coach at altitude on a steep grade. You're just going to have to deal with the fact you're going to go slow. And um, so when you are going this slow, luckily there's not a lot of traffic, but if you're 20 or 30 miles an hour below the speed limit, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to turn on your hazard lights so that people know there's it's abnormally slow. But I like to try and downshift, get to a lower gear before I even start the hill, so I have some extra power. And then I just am patient when you go up these hills and realize you're going to go slow, just like truckers. People are going to expect you to be going slow, especially when you're on this pass. They actually have signs that suggest that lower speed limit. So you'll notice I have it in tow haul mode because tow haul mode uses different gears shifting so that you're in more optimal range. We just passed the Continental Divide here on I-90 in Montana, just out, just east of Butte, Montana. And having just crossed the Continental Divide, that means it's time for us to start going down the pass. So one of the things I like to do before I go down a pass, I like to bring my speed way down, even though it's when I could go faster, and the speed limit 65, I'm actually going to bring my coach speed down to 35 before I even start going downhill because that way I can use more engine braking and I have room to increase speed before it becomes an issue. If you start off at a high speed and try and bring yourself down to a lower speed, it's going to be a lot harder on your brakes. You know, I like to start off the top of the hill nice and slow good practice and then make sure you're in tow haul mode again and if the coach isn't it'll usually downshift itself if you're going slightly downhill and if it's not if you push the brake that will force it to downshift and then you'll notice my engine speed increase from 2000 rpm to 3800 rpm so the engine is doing some of the braking for me, so I minimize the amount of time I have to put my foot on the pedal of the brake. I generally try to only do braking for about 15, 20 seconds at a time, and then I try to give it time in between so that I don't let my brakes get hot. But that's about it. Those are the, the main tips to help you more comfortably and confidently navigate mountain passes in your gas coach. Similar concepts with the diesel coach. They're a little bit more forgiving because they have more powerful braking and more powerful engines. But all those things are something you should probably do regardless of where you're driving a diesel coach, a gas coach, or a truck and trailer. All things you should try and be mindful of to be safe on the roads because the last thing you want to do is have hot brakes when you need them. And we really don't spend a lot of time driving on mountain roads and hills and mountainous terrain in order to be concerned about the additional time it takes us to get anywhere. Yeah, and that's a good point too. Like our coach, these hills are really steep and they but and the coach you end up not going very fast, you gotta be really careful. But we spend so little time at altitude and on passes. I mean good morning ahead two years on the road and the vast majority of our driving is on relatively flat low altitude roads. So we've already come a couple, probably almost three miles down this pass and I've hardly touched my brakes. It's been almost all the engine keeping our speed down so my brakes are nice and fresh. But you'll notice a lot of these other people are just being a little more confident got passed by a couple semis and another RV and I might be getting passed by another one soon but I don't care I'd rather just be safe, cautious, and be easy on our coach. You know, no sense in working my coach too hard. Better longevity. And safer, yeah. There's your runaway truck ramp. So if you weren't being responsible with your brakes and you end up losing all your braking capacity, that's where you go. You go drive up one of those. And you don't want to do it unless it's a dire situation because you know, you don't want to be clogging up the ramp for someone else who needs it. So the last thing you want to be doing is be sitting on there when someone else shows up because it's hard to get out of them because they have deep gravel on them. That's what slows them down, but in case of emergency, you gotta do what you gotta do.
but I would just recommend don't don't consider it a, a game. I uh, I knew somebody once that tried to use one of those in their regular 4x4 pickup just for fun, and they almost got stuck in there. And the uh, last thing you want to be do is be stuck in there when a semi really does need it. <laughs> That'd be ugly. Look how beautiful these rock formations are over here. That's one of the other advantages of driving nice and slow is that you just take in a little bit more scenery than you might have. So, because you're not white knuckling over your speed and scared that you're going to overheat your brakes, you can just be calm and relaxed and enjoy the ride. Safe driving, everyone.